welcome back everyone so in this lecture actually i will continue to do more problems uh, so like i said it will help you to actually get a very good grip on what we have done so far so now in this uh, lecture i will actually do some uh, problems related to sl2 representation theory so let's begin so we actually uh, proved complete reducibility for all finite dimensional representation of sl2 c and as well as we classified all irreducible representations of sl2 c okay so what we observed while proving that okay if we have a finite dimensional sl2 representation okay and in which if we have a w inside w which is a non zero element such that this w is an eigen vector h eigen vector and let's say x also kills this w okay so x kills w and this h acts as some scalar so let's say that scalar is d okay so this is for some d in let's say z plus so then if you recall the proof that we have done that actually tells us that so the subspace spanned by the following elements okay the subspace spanned by the following elements w y dot w etc y power d w so this is exactly equal to the sub module generated by this vector w okay sl2 c sub module not only that if you call this is some capital w this capital w will be isomorphic to v of t so this is actually hidden in the proof of uh, what we have done so one way to actually again you can go through the proof and then see uh, that uh, uh, this uh, subspace which we called it w is actually invariant under the action of uh, x okay that is the only thing we need to prove so i will just outline i am not going to go through again entire proof so the way we proved i will just outline so you take this w to be the span of this vectors w y w etc y power d dot w okay so now uh, what one can prove one can prove that this subspace is actually indeed spa, indeed sub module for this uh, capital v okay so first step 1 so try to prove w is invariant under sl2 c action so it's clear that it is uh, it is h invariant because w is being h eigen vector you can see that y w will be actually d minus 2 i can will have d minus 2 i can value and so on so if you if you calculate the h action on this y w you can prove that this is d minus 2 times y w okay and so on so that tells us that these w y w they are all eigen vectors for the operator h with the eigen value corresponding to d d minus 2 and so on minus t okay these are all the h eigen values so these are all h eigen vectors so now if you go back to the calculations that we did using the formulas that i wrote down because this x is actually killing w and then this h is acting as dw 
So, then you will be able to prove these two implies y power d plus 1 w is 0. Okay? So, once you convince that y power d plus 1 is uh, w is 0, so then it is clear that this span of w, y, w and so on that is invariant under action of y because this y will just increase the powers, but y power d plus 1 w is 0. So, you are still inside this subspace w. Now, if you take uh, x and then again if you use this formula of that we have actually wrote down for x times y power k, then you can see that uh, using the same computation that we did earlier, this thing will be invariant under again the action of x. So, that makes w is invariant under SL2C action. So, now using that same calculation you can see that this basis w etcetera y power dw because they correspond to distinct eigenvalues of this uh, operator h. Okay. So, that means they are all linearly independent. So, that implies that this uh, uh, these vectors will form a basis. So, in particularly we can explicitly compute the action of SL2C on each element of this basis. So, that will coincide with whatever you have seen for uh, this uh, irreducible model VD. Okay. So, compute explicitly the action of x, y and h on this basis w, y, w etcetera y power d w and see it coincides with the calculation that we have for v of t. Okay. So, that makes that uh, this is actually irreducible. So, for example, the same proof that we did it for uh, v of d works for works here as well because if w is not irreducible then it should have proper non-zero submodule. But if you start with any proper non-zero submodule, so call it w dash. Okay, so then this will have h eigen vector. Okay, because it will have h eigen value because h will map w dash to w dash h is being diagnosable will imply that h restricted to w dash is also diagnosable. So, that makes there is an eigen vector inside this w dash for example, some y i y power i w will be inside w dash. But now from this using repeated application of repeated application of x and y on this y power i w we get all the all other elements all other elements in this uh, w y w etcetera y power d w. So, that proves that this w dash must be equal to w. So, that that actually kind of gives us contradiction that proves that w must be irreducible representation which is isomorphic to v of t. Okay. So, this is actually very very important observation that if you are able to pick some w which is maximal in the sense that x is killing w and it is an eigen vector for the action of h whose eigen value is also like integer. Okay. So, not, not integer just uh, non-negative integer then you can guarantee that this submodule generated by or the sub, subspace generated by these vectors will be isomorphic to irreducible representation v of t. So, this is a very very important observation. So, this will be used throughout in the structure theory of semi simple E algebras. So, one should get comfortable with this observation. So, now uh, I am going to actually tell you how one can actually deal with any given finite dimensional representation of SL2C. So, for that uh, maybe I will actually recall 
are not recall I will just try to prove some of the facts about this finite dimensional representation of SL to C. And then uh, using those facts you can see that you can get more comfortable with the finite dimensional representation 3 of SL2. So, for that to begin with uh, we start with the finite dimensional representation of uh, SL to C. So, then using complete reducibility we know that so this is also called Weil's theorem okay because Weil proved the complete reducibility in general. So, we will call this as also Weil's theorem. So, using Weil's theorem so which is same as complete reducibility. complete reducibility for this finite dimensional representations okay of more generally semi simple algebras but anyway here for sl to c we can also restrict so this v can be written as direct sum of irreducible representation of course some of the vis can be isomorphic okay so, these Vi's are all irreducible finite dimensional representations of SL to C. So, now we can actually uh, see that using this we can immediately get all the eigenvalues of H. When it acts on capital V, so that should be all integers okay all the eigenvalues are integers why because this we know it for all irreducible finite dimensional representations of sl to c so using a complete reducibility we get this for free for cap for capital v so not only that so if we take uh, this h restricted to this kernel x okay so, which will map kernel x to kernel x. So, then so these maximal vectors that generate this individual v1 etcetera vk all of them lie inside kernel x and that will actually form a basis for this kernel x okay that is something we have seen in the proof of uh, complete reducibility. So, kernel x let us say span by this v1 etcetera v k. So, where this v i's are in coming from this capital V i where x is killing and h is acting as this uh, n i v i okay. because it is again kind of diagonal on kernel x. So, you can take it to be h eigenvectors. So, that is what we observe. But anyway we will see later there is another way to actually decompose v into direct sum of irreducibles using some other method. So, that method is more efficient than looking at the kernel x and so on. So, now what is important? Important is all the eigenvalues of this h acting on v they are all actually integers that is most important thing. So, now uh, we can also conclude something about uh, so number of components that appear in this uh, capital V okay this k is the number of irreducible components okay. So, let us say this k so this is the number of irreducible components occur in capital V. So, one can wonder whether this k is unique or not with respect to capital V. So, of, of course, we, we are going to conclude this k has some formula. So, that formula also tells us that this is actually unique okay, but there are other ways to actually convince ourselves this k must be unique. So, what is that formula? So, you can easily see that this k has to be dimension of this V naught plus V 1. Okay. So, what is that? So, this uh, let me call it V okay, maybe I will use this uh, uh, V 0 like this. 
So, this is those vectors in capital V where this H is actually killing and then V 1. So, those vectors in capital V such that H V leaves V. So, that means uh, one is the kernel of H, the another one is kernel of H minus identity. So, that means V naught corresponds to the Eigen space of with respect to H of Eigen value 0 and then V 1 corresponds to Eigen space corresponding to Eigen value 1. Okay. So, now it is easy to see this k will be just a dimension of this V naught plus dimension of V 1. Okay. So, why this is true? So, if you go back to your uh, decomposition, so V is written as some v1 direction etcetera vk. Now, this each vi will be of the form v of di for some di coming from z plus okay, that is non-negative integer. But what are all the weights or the what are all the h eigen values of this capital vi? So, the h eigen values of this capital vi so, they are nothing but uh, d i, d i minus 2 and so on minus d i plus 2 and minus d i. Okay. So, every time it jumps 2 okay, down and uh, goes up to minus d i. So, that means for any given non-negative integer either this sequence d i to minus d i. So, this sequence will contain either 0 R 1. Okay. And since each of these Eigen spaces corresponding to these Eigen values they are one dimensional inside this V d i. So, that says this V 0 intersection this V i or which is same as V 0 intersection V of d i. So, that is at most one dimensional. Okay, the dimension of this space is at most one dimensional. Similarly, the dimension of V0 intersection Vi will be sorry V1 intersection Vi that will be again at most one dimensional. Okay, it will be exactly one dimensional when 0 occurs inside this Vdi. Okay. So, for that Di must be even. So, you can see that dimension of V0 intersection V d i is 1 if and only if this d i is even. Similarly, so this is exactly V1 intersection V d i is 1 if and only if this d i must be odd. Okay. So, that proves that if you are interested in counting number of this V i. So, you need to count only the dimension of V naught and dimension of V 1. Okay. So, put together you get the number of irreducible components. So, so since the right hand side dimension V naught plus dimension V 1 so that is independent of uh, this uh, irreducible decomposition that we have chosen. So, that proves that this k will be actually independent of the irreducible decomposition that we have chosen here. Okay. What I mean by that? Suppose V is isomorphic to some let us say W1 direct sum etcetera some WR where W i's are again irreducible. So, then we must get k equal to R because k is given to be dimension V0 plus dimension V1. Okay, which is independent of the decomposition. So, this is uh, indeed very important observation. Uh, in some sense these observations actually help us to actually give uh, help us to decompose given finite dimensional representation of SL2. Okay, let us see how one can do that. So, before that it is actually uh, good time to introduce what is called characters. Okay. Again we talk about uh, uh, here in SL2C what is called H characters. Okay. So, H characters. So, 
I don't know whether I will be able to actually do this character theory in general, but anyway, let us do this for SL2 in the in the in the introductory course, not a problem. So, what is this H characters? So, you start with V, which is a finite dimensional representation of SL2. So, when V is irreducible, okay, for example, V is V of D. It is very clear that uh, the action of H somewhat tells everything about V of t. Okay, you have a basis, and then you have this uh, maximal vector V naught inside V d. Okay, this is a span of V naught, V one, etc. V d. So it's a d plus one dimensional space where H V naught is given by d V naught. So, more or less this H V naught is, is given to be D V naught that determines what happens this uh, to the uh, H action on other vectors and more or less this H actions which, uh, which determines this, uh, uh, this representation completely. Okay. If you think about it all we need is one needs to know uh, what happens when you apply the H on this v naught okay where this x v naught should be 0 so once you recover this d then you recover this entire representation okay so so that is why it is important to actually keep track of the action of h alone okay so that is actually somewhat helps us to recover the complete uh, representation so, let me make it very precise. So, once I define what is called characters, then it becomes very precise what I was trying to tell. So, let us take this V to be finite dimensional representation of SL to C. Now, using Wiles theorem, you know that this V can be written as direct sum of VK, where each VI are irreducible. Okay. So, now if you take this H action, okay, H acts on V. So, since H acts on each V A as diagonalizable operator, so H acts on V as diagonalizable operator, acts semi simply on V, okay. H acts semi simply on capital V. So, in particularly, this V can be written as direct sum of this V gammas where gamma is coming from C. But since we just saw from earlier uh, observation that all the eigenvalues of this uh, H are actually integers. So, in particularly one can assume that these gammas they are all coming from integers. Okay, There is no issue. But what is V gamma? V gamma is nothing but it is just eigen space corresponding to gamma. So, this is those vectors in capital V such that H V is just given be to be gamma V. Okay. So, the now this can be more dimension more only in the irreducible representation the dimension of each uh, eigen space okay, if it is non-zero it has to be 1, but in general V we do not know what it is, but anyway that is fine. But what we can do, we can keep track of the dimension of this gamma, sorry V gamma and what gamma that occur here. Okay. So, that allows us to define what is called this character. So, the character of course, with respect to H and if the H is understood, then we just leave it and then write it as character of V. Okay. So, the character of V is defined to be summation dimension of V gamma times X power gamma, okay, where gamma is coming from each end. So, a priori this is living inside Lorentz polynomial ring okay, over each end. So, each end bracket X plus or minus 1. Okay. You can also think this sitting inside uh, this Lorentz polynomial ring over complex numbers, there is no issue. Since V is finite dimensional, so this is actually finite sum. Okay, only for finitely many gamma, the dimension of V gamma can be non-zero. So now, 
this is something very important data okay so one can prove that okay i will actually state it as a theorem because this is very very important uh, observation and this is actually happens even for any semi simple lie algebra but anyway let's do it for sl2 no issue so what we want to say let's say v and w they are given to sl2 representations okay so then what i meant by this character actually determines the representation so v is isomorphic to w okay as sl2 representation if and only if the character of v must be same as character of w so basically these two laurent polynomials they are same if they are same then immediately we get that this v and w are isomorphic so this is somewhat some kind of combinatorial data that is actually we are recording from the representation but somehow this combinatorial data okay which actually completely controls the representation so that is why the characters are very very important in the representation theory of semi simple lie algebras so this is uh, very very important observation that whenever the characters are same then we get that uh, this v is isomorphic to w so let us see like how one uh, proves this uh, so basically what you prove you prove that this characters of irreducible representations they are linearly independent okay so because we talk about linearly independence let me actually work over c so one can also talk about digit linearly independent but anyway it is easier for us to just to talk over c not a problem so what i want to say if i take the character of this vd and then look at over all this uh, non negative integer then this set this is actually linearly independent inside this laurent polynomial ring so if we prove that this character of vd this set is actually linearly independent uh, inside this laurent polynomial ring then we immediately get that uh, this character determines the representation so one way is obvious so the forward way if v is isomorphic to w then that would imply that uh, this dimension of v gamma and the dimension of w gamma they are all same for all gamma in z so that proves that character v must be same as character w but for the other way you assume for time being uh, this uh, character vd is linearly independent now using wiles theorem what we know v can be written as some vd1 direct sum etc direct sum some vdr similarly w also can be written as some vd1 dash direct sum etc direct sum v some ds dash okay now if the character of v is same as character of w and this character of v of d they are all linearly independent then what we get we get exactly equal to character of v of d1 plus etc plus character of v of dr equal to character of v of d1 dash plus etc plus character of v of ds dash okay so this is simple fact if you take direct sum of uh, to representation then the character will get uh, added okay so this i will leave it as exercise if v is v1 direct sum v2 then character of v is same as character of v1 plus character of v2 so that is not uh, that hard to prove so from this we can see that if these two things are equal and they are all linearly independent that forces that okay so this r must be equal to s not only that this multi set d1 etc dr must be same as d1 dash etc d s r dash okay this is i am treating it as a multi set similarly this is also multi set so that proves that this multi sets are same and the number of components are same 
that means these two are isomorphic okay so that proves v is isomorphic to w so this tells us that character determines the representation so let's see how one proves this uh, character of vd they are all linearly independent so let's look at character of vd and then make some uh, important observations so vd we know that this is spanned by some vectors v0 v1 etc v vd okay small vd so whose eigen values we already written down this is d d minus 2 up to minus d so in particularly what will happen to the character of vd so the character of vd is explicitly so because all the eigen spaces are one dimensional so you get x power d plus x power d minus 2 plus etc plus x power minus t. So if you just use this expansion for this uh, 1 minus x power n divided by 1 minus x you can see that this is exactly 1 plus x plus etc plus x power n minus 1 okay. One way to prove this you just multiply on both side and then see for example if you take 1 plus x plus etc plus x power n minus 1 and then multiply with 1 minus x then you get 1 plus x plus etc plus x power n minus 1 minus x minus x square plus etc plus minus x power n okay. So then you cancel all these terms so then you end up only this 1 minus x power n okay so that proves this identity now if you use this identity here you can see that you can take out this x power minus d so if you take out this x power minus d then you get this is x power 2d plus x power 2d minus 2 which is x power 2 into d minus 1 plus etc plus 1 okay the second term may be x d plus 1 plus x power minus d so if you take out that uh, minus d then you get uh, 1 plus x here so yeah So this is sorry this is 2 so you get x square here x square plus 1. So now using this simple calculation you can see that character of vd is x power minus d times so this you can think like 1 plus y plus etc y power d which you can replace with this. So then it is 1 minus x square d divided by 1 minus x square okay. So if you put it inside you can see that this is uh, you can also switch the sign so x power d minus x power minus d divided by uh, this is x square minus 1. okay sorry this is going to be okay 2d sorry x square 2d minus 1 here so let me redo it so the character of vd is equal to x power minus d 1 plus x square plus etc plus x power 2d so that means you can put y equal to x square so this is same as x power minus d 1 plus y plus etc y power d so which you can write it as 1 minus y power d plus 1 divided by 1 minus y okay that is that is this formula says so into x power minus t so then if you just uh, 
rewrite this is x power twice d plus 1 minus 1 divided by x square minus 1 into x power minus t. So, this is x power uh, yeah, d plus 2 minus x power minus t divided by x square minus 1. I guess I am doing something wrong. So, okay, I will leave it to you to think about it actually how to simplify this. It is not hard to simplify this, uh, but what is important? So, the simplified form actually looks better. Okay. But anyway, without simplifying, you can see that the character of Vd is nothing but x power d plus x power d minus 2 plus etc. plus x power minus d plus 2 plus x power minus d. Okay. So, now if you take some sum of these characters to be like equal to 0, okay, some linear combination of this, let us say some ai character of v d i the combination to be 1 to k is 0. So, now what you can do you can pick d 1 which is maximal among all the d i's. Okay. So, that means this d 1 is greater than or equal to d i for all i. So, then you can look at this a 1 the character of this v d 1 plus the rest. Okay. So, if some of them are actually uh, going to be like uh, equal, okay, then it will come with some multiplicity. So, if d1 is equal to some di, then you count it with multiplicity, then it you get some n n i di. So, that way what you do? You first actually assume that these ti's are all distinct. Okay. So, otherwise you, you, you just add the corresponding term so that this coefficient is actually changes. Okay. So, once you assume all d i's are distinct then you can actually uh, make sure that this d 1 is greater than d i for all i not equal to 1. Okay. So, in particularly so some a 1 v character of v d 1. plus some rest of the term will be equal to 0. But note that this character of d 1 has this x power d 1 which has coefficient a 1 plus the rest of the term. All these terms and the terms coming from this all of them, all of them will have degree definitely less than this d 1. Okay. The degree of this x power i in this entire terms that will be definitely less than d 1. So, that makes if by comparing the coefficient of this highest term x power d term you can see that this a 1 must be 0. If a 1 is 0 then using the same argument you can prove a 2 0 and so on. Okay. So, that proves that this character of v d must be linearly independent over complex number. So, this is just by comparing the degree highest degree term x power d term inside this summation. Okay. By eliminating that you can come down and so on. So, I will actually leave it to you to uh, check uh, okay. you can simplify this. I believe the simplified form should be something like this x power d minus x power minus d divided by x minus x power minus 1. Okay maybe we can actually trace back and then see whether this is correct or not x power d minus x power minus d divided by x minus x inverse. So, if you just take it out x power minus d then you get x power minus d times x power 2d minus 1 divided by 
x square minus 1 and then here x minus 1 okay so that will add up x d plus 1 x power 2 d minus 1 divided by x square minus 1 so this is what we are supposed to get okay so if you take it inside you get x power d plus 1 minus x power minus d plus 1 divided by x square minus 1 okay so let's go back and then see whether we got something like that and uh, yeah we made a mistake i guess so here x square minus 1 is correct so that is what we are getting here and then uh, x power minus d plus 1 we should get so one term is missing so basically uh, you take out x power minus d yeah here maybe like uh, we, may, we must have made some mistake so this is uh, up to d we are adding so here we are getting x square d minus 1 okay so this is correct twice d plus 1 minus 1 we take one x out and then we are d plus 1 minus x power minus d plus 1 sorry x inverse out and x square minus 1 okay so i will leave it to you to check it's okay not a problem okay i will stop here and then uh, we will continue uh, with the lectures in the next class okay so as I said, uh, this uh, jordan uh, Chevalier decomposition will be very, very important in order to develop further theory. So I, I have made one video on that. So I advise you to go through that uh, before actually getting into the next lectures. Okay, I will stop here. Thanks.